suggested that there's a young man that uh, he never misses these things on Sunday. He watches, he watches every one of them every Sunday. I'm saying, I'm impressed. This young man is not, I mean, he's not old young man. He's young young man. So, uh, so I am impressed with his zeal to hear what God's got to say. Matter of fact, it brought back my remembrance. And I lost when I first got saved duty night. We couldn't wait to the next meeting. Uh, after we got filled with the Holy Spirit duty night, <clears throat> we were going to back to church in Charlestown. And we got out earlier than the Christian church. The guy that was pastor of the Christian church was more long winded than our pastor was, so they waited just a little bit longer. And we would hurry and get out of the Baptist church and make sure we parked in the place we could get out. And we would zoom down to the Christian church and catch the last 15, 20, 25 minutes. Sometimes an hour. Uh, yeah, sometimes an hour. It all depends on how the spirit was moving. So anyway, we finally ended up, uh, the most of our people that were filled with it were from there. So we ended up moving to the Christian church in Charlestown. And that's when Judy and I really began to grow because we had like spirits and kindred spirits and everybody wanted the same thing and uh, David can remember those days because she went through that in, uh, down in Kentucky but all the same age that they all had the same hunger and just it, it's something that God did back in the mid 70s early late 60s early 70s God did that kind of thing for people and we were so excited about that so Tracy remembers too huh? Tracy remembers too Tracy was in on that too wasn't she? yeah yeah, Tina. Oh, now, Tina came in just a little bit. Like, oh, it's not a whole lot. Huh? We said late at night, wouldn't we? Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I have to get up at 6 yeah. to go to work. Kids did up any different in the wintertime. Kids just find a bed on the pile of clothes somewhere and <laughs> cover up with a coat in there. Mom um, and dad would pick them up and bundle them up. Never knew where you were going to find them. Never knew where you were going to find them. You just have to hunt them through the house. Wherever, whoever's house you think you've got to hunt your kids at. But he never knew what he worked. But anyway, those were days going by, and I, I we had such a zeal back then. And I talked to somebody yesterday that had almost that same zeal, and I thought, God, if we could turn that zeal into the church and let the church see what it's like to have that kind of zeal, maybe we'll be catching on all of us. I'm going to get my glasses. All right. Uh, good deeper, good deeper. <clears throat> My zero turn has been broken for about two months, a month and a half, two months. I couldn't get the blades to come on. And so the guy who went to work on it, he told me what to do. He said, I believe that your sweep was on. I'm going, ah, that's not what I heard. I'm going to call you 400 off getting the thing fixed. So I was kind of weird about getting put 400 off of my zero. <clears throat> it, it's about 12 years old. I thought, I don't know if I want to spend it. I'm going to check it out. Anyway, <clears throat> I got on it yesterday, charged it up, got on it, and I said, I'm just going to try the thing try it. So I tried one day, and it didn't, the blade wouldn't come on. So I went out shoot a shot. I said, you know, one on the time, and I'll be here. And I turned it down one notch, and I took the blades on it, and it came on, and it worked all afternoon. I was so happy. I'm over here by the grass, and I could see it. <laughs> I'm over here by the grass on my side of the road. Even the ladies do want to grab I'm over here anyway. So I'm going to have more going, and I'm going to run out of gas. I'm sorry. Just have to take care of so, anyway. <clears throat> so, that's what I think God for that. Yeah. So, I'm not a mechanic. And I definitely don't know about electric. So, Grace, that, that was a good testimony. Yeah. You know, I tell you what, you're. Uh, that kind of stuff is very, very serious in the house. Absolutely. It has to catch fire and get that stuff on fire. <clears throat> so God did bless you. We'll talk about prayer today and how it affects all of us. Prayer sometimes affects, you know, some of us differently than it does other people uh, because we have different uh, set of uh, want-tos and we our desire level is not the same. 
So it affects everybody in a different way. And uh, I told the Lord, you know, I said, I, I think prayer is an important part. One of the things that I that I grew, I cut my teeth on when I first came, got saved. First year I was saved. I uh, we cut our teeth on prayer. People would just get together and pray. Uh, I mean, you didn't, they didn't. You didn't have to set a prayer meeting. They just wanted to pray and cry out to God for God's people and cry out for lost people. Uh, I can remember these days, and that, that, the long to on the inside of me is to see that again in the church, because the church at that time was a thriving church. Uh, not just one, all of them were. Every one that you could think of, my, almost had four churches because people was crying out to God and praying and, and uh, you know you didn't they didn't everybody that got saved didn't always come to our church. Uh, but we would have people from different denominations. We had people from Methodist Church come up and pray with us uh, at the at the Christian church. Didn't make a difference what denomination we were from. We just wanted people to come into the kingdom. And I talked to somebody recently that, that had an urgency to do that. They were just hungry for the things of the kingdom of God. And that stirred something up on the inside of me. I thought, God, to have that hunger again. How do I get that hunger? How do I get that want to in my life? I want that too. I, I want to be able just to drop down on my knees sometimes and just, just pray and cry out to you no matter what. Uh, you know, people need prayer. We need practice. <laughs> Let's put the two together and see if God is glorified. My say me and my God. Amen. Now, the uh, uh, thing about prayer is that prayer is communication between God and man. Uh, why do we pray? How many of you believe that? Let me ask you two questions. I wasn't going to ask this, but I changed my mind. How many of you believe that God always hears every prayer you pray? Maybe I'll leave that. Yes. Yeah. What's in my scripture? scripture is Does he still hear that sin? Since God hears that sin. You're the pastor of life. You're supposed to be fun. <laughs> well, I got a scripture for you. Okay. And I want to have a scripture up there. Not right away, I think. We're going to wait until we can count them. A little bit from that, yes. <coughs> but anyway, I, I want you to understand that prayer is an important part of Christianity. Somebody pray for us, or we would never come into the kingdom. I mean, who prayed for me? Probably my granny uh, and her husband. You know, as I didn't say, my grandfather, he was a grouch, and I, he was always oh, hard to get along with. So my wife, at times in my lifetime, she has called me by his name. <laughs> And I uh, would be one that grab her by both ears and kiss her right now, but I didn't. So, uh, and Joan and I, I talked to Joan about that yesterday. And she had the audacity to tell me, she said, well, you are a little bit like him. I'm going to get up and walk off from just slap her good. But she could get out of the house before I could get to her, so I'm going to slap that cold. Anyway, but then, I, you know, I, I want to say that that prayer is really, really, really an important part of who we are. Uh, you know, well, I don't mean to pray myself. Well, then pray for somebody else. All your needs are met. You said that God, you've got a good enough relationship that God takes care of you, and you don't need to pray about things because you believe that you have received all that stuff. Well, I'm okay with that. But if you don't need to pray, somebody that you do know Amen. needs prayer. Your neighbor. What about your neighbor? How long has it been since you prayed for your neighbor? What do you know about your neighbor? What do, do you know them well enough to call them by first name? And for them to, for you to wave at them and say, hey, how you doing? And then speak back to you? I live in a subdivision. I've never lived in a subdivision before. And you'd be surprised. I, I, I was a little surprised. That, you know, I, we sit on the front porch. Judy and I, we got, we have one of us few front porches uh, in that subdivision that people set out. Now one, I think one or two other families maybe got a porch in and they set out on. <clears throat> and they didn't start doing that for Judy and I did. 
But we just sit out there and drink coffee maybe in the morning or in the afternoon in the evening. We'll sit out there and have coffee. And people drive by with this old hand and they go, what? I don't know folks to do this. Well, wave your hands on the head. It's okay. You know. And so now people drive by and they beat me to the pump. They throw their hand up before I get to, you know, before they get to the house. So they, they've learned that, that where they can change. When you walk by my house, I'm going to say something to you. They walk their dogs all the time in that subdivision. And so I come in every time they walk by my house. Sometimes it's a husband and a wife. Sometimes it's a husband and it's time to walk. And then sometimes it's the wife and then it's their time to walk. Uh, some of them have big dogs, little dogs, all kinds of dogs. And I make comments. I say, hey, I see your dog walking again today. So, yeah, the thing just he, he jerked me around. So, and we have conversation. And they look, they look forward and they just almost go down when they get in front of my house because they're looking for me to talk. If I'm out there, I'm going to say something. You said, do you have to say something to everybody that walks by? You do. I do. And I know you can't do it. So, uh, so my, my question is, does God hear every prayer that we pray? The Bible says in John 39, 31, that what I want to go to. Uh, put it up on it. <coughs> Got it. Yeah, you can. It's 30, 31, 32. John 9, 30, 32. Go ahead. Okay. Did I not put it on there at all? Uh, I think you had Matthew 9, 32. I did. <laughs> well, John, well, Matthew is one, but I didn't, I didn't I don't think I gave you that on 9, one. The man answered and said, and said Well, we're here. Oh, I'm not here. <laughs> John 9 31 says John 9 31 we know that God does not hear sinners now this is a and I want to explain it to you but if anyone is God fearing and does his will he hears him now a lot of people are going to use that as the New Testament and say, see God, I told you God don't even sin. But that's not, listen, you, we're, we're looking at a piece of scripture that Jesus spoke to these people. He's not ministering under the new covenant. Right. He's ministering as a prophet under the old covenant. Mm -hmm. So he has to say within those bounds because in those days, God did not listen to people that were sinners. He only listened to a certain amount of people. Listen to this. He, in the Old Testament, he only listened to prophets, kings, and priest. He didn't listen to anybody else. Nobody had the right to just come into his presence and pray. You don't know how well off we are in the New Testament having lived under a new covenant which, that we now have become his priest. We are the royal priesthood of the Father God. We have taken the place of the priest in the old covenant. That's the reason that God allows all of us to be able to pray anytime we want to. Now the priest in the old covenant, only two, twice a year, only the chief priest could come into the presence of the Lord. And if they were, they had something sideways in them, uh, well you've heard me say this before, they would tie a rope to the leg, and if they got in there and they weren't clean, like uh, they were, weren't sin free, let me put it that way, uh, they'd fall down hammer dead. And they would drag them out by the no, because nobody else couldn't go in there. So they would take the rope and pull them outside and untie them and throw them in the fire. Wow. So ask me if, if the priest was really, really in, in pretty good shape when they went in there. He cleansed himself and done everything he can to do that. So that, that's what this is all about here. He, Jesus, this man is talking about that. He said, we know that God... Now they were asking this, this blind man who God or Jesus had just healed this man and after, they, after he healed him, the priest wanted to know who healed him. And he told him, he said, this man's name is Jesus. Well, how did he heal you? He put some clay on my eyes and, and, and rubbed it on my eyes and told me to get, uh, go wash my face in the pool, the pool of Shalom. And so he said, I went and washed my eyes. He said, and when I washed my eyes, I could see. And then... They, didn't, uh, they just had a, they went to his parents and asked his parents. 
Is this your boy that was born blind? Yes. Well, how did, how did he get well? And they said to him, Why don't you ask him? He's of age. Talk to him about it. Don't talk to us. We don't know. We wasn't there. We just know that he can see. And our, our blind son can see. So they asked him, and he said, Did you hear me the first time? He said, Do you all have a problem with hearing? I told you what, but the first time. And he got kind of snotty with it. <laughs> and I thought, Happy day. So they threw him out of the temple because he talked to him that way. Then Jesus hung him down and talked to him. And he said, uh, This Jesus, when Jesus began to talk to him, he said, How do I? He said, Do you know the Lord? And he said, I don't know. He said, Teach me how to get a hold of him. Teach me how to do this. And so Jesus brought him into the presence of the Father. And when that man left him, that he was a believer. He believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so having said that, God does hear sinners. He hears the cry of their heart. Because God's grace touches everybody. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You don't have to live a perfect life. If, it, if God hears people that live a sinful life and are not, are not Christians and have to love the Bible, that God so loved the world. If He loved them, He'll listen to us. He wants to help people. God is a gracious God and He loves us. He's not against us. Amen. And especially believers. Because He wants to He wants to do good to us. Uh, Psalm, well, I saw him, yeah. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. He said to do you good and to bring you home. And, and I have good plans for you. That still goes for us today. God has a plan for all of our lives. Good things. He wants good things to happen to us all the time. But if we don't ever come into His presence, we don't have a relationship with Him, how are we going to know what He's got for us? We can't know that. So what we have to do is build a relationship with Him so we can talk to Him. And prayer is not just, listen, it's not just, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray to the Lord my soul. It's not about that. And it's not following His blessed food in Jesus' name. Amen. There's more prayer than that. You know, a lot of Christians, that, that's their scope of prayer. That's, that's the length that they pray. Why? Because they don't know how. They don't know how to pray. They don't know how to dress, use a, using prayer. Now, there's a correct way to pray. And uh, uh, anyway, I got written down here. Why didn't we pray? Is it because that, that God hears us or just because we're trying to make Him... That, that we believe that God hears us or we're just trying to make Him feel sorry for us and, and have pity on us. People think that they can shame God if they came to that country and bothered Him so much that He'd finally give in. Uh, I don't know who's going to give in before God does. <laughs> I guarantee you that. You can pray that you're blue in the face and then die and He still won't have to answer you. If you pray an unscriptural prayer, He won't do that. You can't win over Him. And he don't want you to know it. He just wants you to do it the right way. <clears throat> so, uh, we need to learn how to sow mercy and grace. Now, God's mercy and grace is for everybody. And that's what happens to unbelievers. God's mercy and grace. And I want to say this without sounding ugly. His grace, I don't care what you do. When you're, when you're an unbeliever, you're, you're, you're an unbeliever. And he knows that we live, we live. How many of you here can say that you've been living a good life as an unbeliever? I mean that you were ugly sometimes. I mean really ugly. Nobody did. You didn't either? <laughs> I thought you were the best woman on the face there for my She probably was. Oh, she really was. <laughs> but, but I quickly I was so mean that she was. <laughs> <laughs> she probably was, but she's so mean well, uh, the company she ran around with, that's why after I met her, uh, didn't do me very good. Right? Cassandra said, Miss Judy's a saint. Huh? Cassandra said, Miss Judy's a saint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually do. Don't tell her that. She'll be going around the house. Uh, <laughs> out from the, uh, <laughs> She'll be looking at me and shot her shoes and everything else. But anyway, so we probably, uh, I went to the dam last night, I thought, we probably need to learn how to sow mercy and grace because if we don't uh, sow that, 
then we're going to come up short on the time when we need mercy and grace. Mercy is not getting the things that you do deserve, and grace is getting the things that you do deserve. One is getting, not getting it, and the other one is getting things that you deserve that God wants you to have, even though you don't deserve it. Neither one of them don't deserve it. But grace is, is on God's part, and for God so loved the world that He loved you, and uh, these two said, well, my grace and faith, are you saved? God gives you grace, and He gives you the faith to believe in Him strongly, and that's all I want to say about that and move on. No, uh, because <clears throat> uh, it, if we don't learn how to sow that, and that's what we told Joanna. Joanna, and Joanna said it. I was so impressed with what she had to say to after God. Uh, she went through that whole thing about some, some of the things she wanted. It took about half hour, 45 minutes, and you the, the sharing all that stuff that she learned. And I tell you what, it really touched her. It affected her. I'm not back. She had tears when that face cup and she had a lot of tears because she remembered what she had seen the night before. That's the kind of things that we ought to hear. And God uses those things. Of course, we have prayed for Joanna. I, I told you about a week ago. I said the devil is trying to destroy our family. We got two boys at odds with each other, and we got two girls at odds with each other. And if the third one was here, she'd probably be around the middle. Of <laughs> I said the devil is trying to destroy our family, trying to derail us from from our mission in life and and pastoring and doing things that for the kingdom and get, get our mind off of doing that and get it off on my family. I'm not going to do that. I said, we're going to pray and we're going to stop this. Amen. So we came against it. Judy and I made a declaration against it. We just said, this thing stops now. I break your power in Jesus' name. Now let me tell you something. I believe that when I declare something, it's going to come to pass. Because I've done what he told me I needed to do. Why would I not believe him? He don't hold any sin against me. Can you say in your heart that God don't hold anything against you? How many of you can say that He don't hold anything against me? He don't. He don't hold anything against me. He, and He can't because His Son died the death that paid for all sin for all time. I tell you what, you need to read Hebrews the tenth chapter. 10, the, the 10th chapter, and the whole chapter, let's read the whole chapter, and circle things that talk about sin that you're free from sin. He cleansed you once and for all. For all time. He sanctified you one time. You don't have to go back and do the job over. Yeah. And you have to see yourself the way God sees you. And He sees you through the lens of who His Son is. Colossians 3, 3. He said... You have died and your life is hid in Christ. Amen. What are you going to do with that? You can't be condemned. You can't condemn yourself. If God don't see you that way, if you do something to yourself, if you put more on yourself than God puts on you, then you think you're bigger than Him. And you can't do that to be humble. Hello. It's unscriptural for you to try to do that. So just quit it. And therefore, that's what he said in Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who have had the born again experience. Believers, okay? I'm getting back to this thing. So, you can take that and stand in His presence and say, Father, I'm a believer. And you told me if I would come with boldness to the throne of grace and ask you for help, that you would help me. That's all you have to say to Him. I can promise you that he'll let you come into his presence right. and he'll listen to you and you can place your petition before him. But in all of that, there's some things that you have to do first before you get to that. Let's see one more have I Are we to uh, Matthew 21 yet? <clears throat> okay. Matthew 21. I kind of share this with you. Now in the morning, when Jesus was returning to the city, he'd been out all night. He left the side of the night before he went out and spent the night without him. And I'm going to tell you, I believe he spent the night with the Father, praying and seeking 
Sister Neal, that's just my own personal belief. I can't prove that. But in the morning, the Bible says, when he was repeated, was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing a long fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said, No longer shall there be any fruit from you, and at once the fig tree withered. Now they were with him, the disciples were with him at this time. I don't know where he picked him up or if they were waiting on him now wherever he went, they were waiting for him. But anyway, they went out somewhere too. So he said to here, seeing his disciples were amazed and asked, how did the fig tree wither all at once? Now, Mark don't give that account. It just says that they went by the next day. But this one says, and they walked by immediately, and it, the Bible says it withered immediately. And Jesus answered and said to them, he said, truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt. Now, that, that, as a believer, and you want to pray, that's our first problem right there. Right. And do not doubt. I don't know if, God, if I'm in good enough shape. So how many of you get condemned before you ever come into God's presence? Mm -hmm. See, that's things you've got to take care of before you come into His presence. You've got to believe, and i got Scripture at the end down here, to prove to you that you, you have the right to come in and stand in His presence and ask for what you want, and He'll listen to you. And uh, so I'll, I'll just cover them a little while. I can cover them right now. But anyway, uh, what am I at here? Oh, I'm going to have to say <clears throat> He said, if you have faith and don't doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, you take it up and cast it to see, it will happen. Amen. I don't know if anybody's ever done it. But that don't, mean it's not, that don't mean it's impossible. Because the Bible said all things are possible with God. If there was a need for it, God could move the mountain if he wanted to. He is. And he could use you to speak to the mountain. And the mountain would be gone. If he wanted to do that. I'm thinking about volcanoes. No lie. I was watching the news the other day. Something over that way, somewhere over there. Erupted. And the lava was going in the ocean. And it was still kind of red when it went in the ocean. It's still kind of red. Have you seen it? Yeah. Gorgeous, isn't it? I've never been, but I don't know that I'm going to go wave in that kind of water. <laughs> <laughs> huh? This is how it is. So what? Water is not cool. <laughs> Just seeing the water is cool. I'm not getting in it. I'm not getting to stay out of water. But, Lord, so what I want to say is that God used even the lava from volcanoes to come up and go and form out. And the islands are getting bigger all the time. They're not getting smaller. They're getting bigger. And God uses that to, to cause the, the islands grow. I thought they were pretty small in the park. <laughs> Didn't you? Mm -hmm. I thought it was anyway. So, <clears throat> but I want you to see this whole passage that Jesus shared there with him is a passage of, of uh, understanding the principles of what faith is all about. He said, in all things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. What's the condition there? Oh, he didn't put one in there, did he? Believe. Don't doubt. He just said believe. Yeah. Why in the world would somebody who didn't believe pray? Right. So the thing about that is, I believe, I don't know what your problem is. And I don't know if a family don't have a problem. They don't know a family that's perfect. <laughs> you don't know your you wife. You call it the devil. Do you work pretty close? Do you work pretty close? Don't think they do. Don't think they do. Don't think they do. Oh, well, okay. We're going to let them find that out for themselves, okay? 
So what I want you to see is, God won't work families because the devil is going to see to it. If you have peace in your family, he's going to try to disrupt it. Hello. And he can do lots of things like that little boy that got killed. That, that's the bro that is the total work of the devil. And I got so many when I heard that. That's the thing of the devil if I've ever seen that. Somebody, that little girl should have known that her family ought to taught her how to pray and ask for God protection and keep her from accidents. And that little boy, you know what, he, his father should have protected him. They could have been avoided, but you know what? Thing? We have to learn sometimes about stupid things we did, and all of us have done stupid things. I can tell you that. None of us have ever been perfect in the way we run our lives. And so we've all needed God's help, and we have to cry out to Him, Father, help me. I've got myself in a mess. I've had to say that more than once, by the way. <clears throat> I'm about to say it about my wife.
The Holy Spirit has our answer, and our Father does not hold, hold it back from us. He is for us and not against us. Matthew 21, if everyone knows. Am I there now? 18 to 22. Okay. All right, we'll pass that. Now we're James 4. James 4, 2 and 3. Okay? And this is what he had to say. He said, You love and don't have anything. You love, in a sense, not, not necessarily a sexual love, but you lust after things. You uh, covet things that somebody has. Well, I man, I like to have something like that. I, man, I like to have one in. Well, how, how long can they afford that? Uh, I wish I had that thing. That's what that's called. That. He said, that you don't have, so you commit murder. Not so much that that you're going to kill somebody. Is that possible? You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel, and you do not have because you do not want. One of Hamilton's favorite sayings is this My name is Jimmy. He said, I'm one of God's favorite sayings. I said, I said, My name is Jimmy, and Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. I'm here to receive. He said, you know what? He said, God always, always met my needs. He said, I tell him, God, I'm here. I, need, I have some needs, and I'm going to present them to you and tell you what, I, what my needs are. And let you, let, I want to acknowledge them for you that I have these needs. And so you can bless me. And I thought, if God, and have any of y'all know people that tell God the problem? Come in and pray. Father, I just want to let you know that uh, <laughs> I thought my big tongue is hurting pretty bad. Uh, I know you probably didn't, didn't know that, but I want you to know that. Uh, well, I stepped on a nail and, and my foot's been taken. I just, you know, I, I didn't even probably know that. Well, I didn't get paid this week for my paycheck like I should have. Uh, well, we're a little short, so. Uh, matter of fact, I have a shortfall this week in my. And they paid me all my check, but I'm still in a shortfall. And I, and I, so you tell God what your problem is. You don't have to go into detail. He knows, he had the answer to your problem before you had the problem. Amen. And all you have to tell him is, what do you do? I don't want to in this situation. And I don't know what the solution is, but I know that you have my answer, and I don't want you tell me, give me the wisdom, the wisdom of God flow into me and out of me so I don't have to deal with the situation. It's in my list. It's good. You can do that. That's the way it should be done. You don't have to tell God no problem. You can tell God what you want out of that. You can say, Father, I'd like for you to do this for me. Let me even know what the Bible said he'll give you the desire of your heart. That's right. Come on. Lord, I, I want you to do this for me. I don't know what your problem is. You can tell him how, how you want, what you want to do. Now, sometimes we don't tell him the right thing. And that's not what his will for our lives are. And you can't come into God's presence uh, out of his will, doing things that you ain't got no business doing, and acting ugly. If you do, the devil has a right to stop you. And stop the, the prayer from going and coming. We may all believe that. You might have ever read the book of Daniel. And Daniel prayed. The Bible says that the angels withstood the answer. They were given, God sent, he sent the answer immediately back to Daniel. But the thing about it is, I mean, read Daniel 9. What happened was that they withheld the answer for two weeks. And then the chief, one of the chief angels had to come and make the, the devils turn a loose, turn loose of, of the answer, and he carried the damn dead to them. Mm -hmm. Come on. So do you also believe that your, your answer can be detained? Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about the difference between declaration and prayer and how that how is it different? Okay. I'm going to be pretty good But, is that another difference? Praying, praying is a little bit, I want to move out there, if you have open doors, I want to Prayer is a little bit different uh, than declaring. When you pray, uh, Mark 11, 
Then we go to Mark 11. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have faith in God. All right. He said, and then the next verse is 23. Truly I say, to whoever says to the mountain, be taken up and cast and see, and does not doubt his heart, but believe what he, what he says is going to happen, shall be granted unto him. Stop right there. What he says is, first of all, speak against the problem. Speak against the mountain. That's what he's telling us to do. Why don't we do it? When I decided, Judy and I decided, when my son Michael was living with a woman, uh, he lived with her in uh, Silversburg, but he had got out of one relationship in Louisville and <coughs> in Shelbyville. And then he had a baby by her. Uh, and then he had, Michael got a son who was 21, 22 years old, giving me that. Uh, it happens to the best of, of pastors. Uh, and they may other people too, but best of pastors. And so uh, he was living with a lady in Silverberg down there. And uh, I told you, I said, we need to pray for Michael. One morning we was getting we always had a little cramming, you know, no we always pray for our kids and so we were getting ready to pray for him and the Lord spoke to me. You said, Well let me she said, let me go to the bathroom first. So she went to the bathroom. While he was going to the bathroom, the Lord spoke to me and said, He said, You're praying the wrong thing for him. I said, What? He said, You're you're praying the wrong prayer for your son. He said, That's not what you ought to pray. And he told me what to pray. So when she came back and I told her, I said, We're praying the wrong thing. I said, We need to take authority over this thing and break the power of the enemy over him and, and stop that and, and get him set free. Because he couldn't get free from that himself. Why? Because he's too wrapped up in it. He don't know to do that. He's not living the kind of life as a Christian that he should be living. And he's not interested in that. He's interested in just doing what he's doing. Now watch it. So we pray about that and what, what they want to do to Tuesday. Friday night he came to my house. You know the story. We I've shared this story many times with him. And he came to our house and him and her got me into it. And uh, I'm all the answer. I said, said it just felt like I wasn't some guy at work had talked to him about it. Oh yeah, well I, on Thursday the guy had said something to him at work and he said, Michael, talked to him on Thursday. Michael worked at the Simpson Bureau and the guy worked there too. And so he came in and told Michael, he said, Michael, he said, uh, our church had a prayer meeting last night. He said, and the pastor said, we're just going to pray now. I just feel like we need to pray tonight. He said, so everybody find your place and, and find somebody to pray for and just pray for them. He said, I got down to pray. He said, and God, who do you want to pray for? And he said, your name, Michael Tom, came up. And he said, and I started praying for you. He said, and this is what the Lord said. And so he gave Michael a word. He said, when are you going to quit doing what you do for yourself and start doing what I tell you to do? Huh? Stop doing what you want to do. Stop doing what you want to do. Stop doing what I want you to do. That's his exact words to Michael. He said, I don't know if you really believe in that. I didn't believe in that. He said, I'll be believe in that. He said, okay. So, this is on Friday. Friday night. Then we had a little thunder and lightning. I told you, I said, did you roll the windows of the car? I know they're going to ask that. I know what it's going to cost me. It cost me to get out of bed, out of bed, and go out of chair. And so we did. But we didn't use a garage. We had a garage for us. So we just got to touch something. Isn't that what, isn't that what garages are built for? For other things besides cars? It's not built for cars, but you can go out of bed. So I went out and got down in the bottom of the chair. Michael was down and said, Michael, what are you doing? He said, I just need to place a crash now. So he said, can I have some blankets? I said, yes, I'm going back. I said, yeah, I'm going to go to the desk. I got a blanket and I threw it down the stairs. He stand up and I threw it down and I said, here. And I threw it down and so he said, okay. And he started walking down. He stopped and turned and said, hey, Dad. He said, uh, what, what if I need more than a couple of nights? He said, so I did a mile or two of crash of the day. He said, but what if I need longer than that? I said, uh, you know, your bedroom's that up there, don't you? He said, yeah. I said, it's still up there. I said, there ain't nobody there. He said, okay. So he went down the stairs and he said, hey, Dad. Look at me. I said, there ain't nobody there. He said, okay. So he was back and told her. He said, look. He said, I'm going to break this off. He said, this is not mine. 
Ti sei dato un po' a te, sì, no? Ti sei dato un po' a te, sì, sì, ciao. Ah, ma io ti prendo il video, ti capo, ma ti prendo il video, 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 ti prendo il video. So he had, and he, I mean, he can get my truck, he already had my truck. He can get it for way over a month, he had my truck. But that's not truck you're for in the family for your kids. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he, we got his stuff and came home, and he moved in. So it was on Sunday afternoon, kind of. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't get thought and get tired of going to the place as well, so. <laughs> anyway. So, what I'm going to say, if we made that declaration in less than a week, it happened. My dog turned the whole thing around. Michael was home free. He was coming to live in my house <coughs> at that time. He didn't stay in the hotel. I'm telling you. Don't have to get me. Huh? We met Stephanie. We met Stephanie. She had two Twitter videos. He had some things. But so declarations are really, really. You can pray, but the steel that Mark Levin says, uh, you have to speak to the mountain, and that's that's the declaration. You can pray all you want to, but if you don't make the declaration, you didn't speak to the mountain. I can't tell you how important that is. Speak, every time you have an issue with anything, speak to the mountain. That becomes a mountain in your life, and you need to make offer a declaration against that for God to be able to nullify that. He's got to have your permission and your declaration to do it. Do you understand that? Check the hip one way or the other. Okay, I can't check the two of these things fall off. Anyway. And he said, you have to believe uh, what you said is going to happen. And the whole thing about that is, the devil comes in between that time that you say it and the time that you put in believing that it's going to happen and it's, and it's sent from heaven to the earth. The devil, in that time, that's when the trying time comes, all the situations come against you that look like it's not going to work. Amen. Hello. That's not God. That's not God, and that's the work of the devil trying to cause you to believe, disbelieve, that your prayer is going to work and that your declaration is going to work. That's going to happen to you because that's what the devil does best because you're just getting a hold of this thing. You're just learning how to do that. And when you begin to do that and you begin to speak to them, things begin to change. You get more confident all the time in your life with the declaration. You get more confident. To speak about things that you know that need to be spoken to. And it takes time. Sometimes my wife has already given me the sign, cut it sign, go up right quick. And amen, I'm done. How's that for a shut down? Do you like me to